So today we're at Gerald's Cross Community Centre. Uh, we've got a heating safe system uh, and they use TRV. It's a reasonable size system because I think they've got something like 20 uh, zones, heating zones, which they're controlling. And also they're tying into an existing room booking system. So although they're using the heating safe room booking system, they are also using a third party product. And that provides an, uh, a file, a data file, at about two o'clock every night. And that is fed automatically into the heating safe system. So the heating safe can create new heating patterns based on the way in which this building is going to be used. So let's have a look at now. We have behind us here General's Cross Community Centre. So, why is it then that you've gone for uh, a wireless solution for the TRVs instead of uh, wired TRVs? Mainly because the building is a listed building, right. so we have many constraints on what we can actually do within the building. Uh, there's a lot of the initial wiring here is still surface mount, so it gets more and more surface mount, which is a problem getting around everywhere. And you don't really want surface mount in listed buildings, do you? Not if we can help no. it. Um, and the, the walls in the place are very thick to actually get cabling and stuff through and be drilling about it and the rest of it. Right. So doing that as a circuit was quite a big onerous. So Cable's a bit of a no-no, yeah, yeah. and so you went for the wireless yes. TRVs, yes. Uh, and uh, the wireless TRVs have they've gone through the, 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 the thickness of the walls and aren't a problem with that. We've as long as we put enough of the um, range zone, extenders, range extenders yes. we've been fine with that. They've actually given what we need to do. On because that. that's one of the thing about the the uh, Zig type network mm -hmm. is that if you put range extenders, then you can it, it, even if you've got a very thick wall, you can have a range extender on one side and a range extender almost on the other side and it will get through that oh, wall. Oh yes, we've had no yeah. problem with, with the pair. We've put the range extenders in place. Yeah. We've managed to complete a Zigbee set up around it and that is all connected between them all right. We see everything and it all works on that. And, right. and do you, on the software, it will do you this wonderful pattern, uh, sort of a, a plan showing you the yes. radio f signals and how they're going and where they're good and where they're bad. Do you use that at all? Yes, that's why yeah. I, I go on to there to yeah. check out the system, check the working. Yeah. That's when if I see that someone's not my house or something whatever. Oh, then, excellent. Then and of course, you, you don't have to be here to do that. You no. can be that, as long as you've got an internet connection, yeah. you can do that from anywhere, yes. can't you? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, should we now have a look at uh, some of the actual um, yeah, of the we'll rooms? Take around to your yeah, rooms we can, okay. which we can get into. Yeah. All right, let's go and have a look. We're linking from here. We've got the office here with the um, connections on, so we can look at the system from here. Okay. This is also where the diaries are done. Um, we had looked originally connecting to the diaries. At the present, we haven't done that. Um, it may be something in the future which would be a useful addition right. to be able to connect onto it properly. Okay. So, so that box there is what's inside that. That's the, is that the link, controller. That's the control. No, that's the actual link to the um, network. Right, gotcha. So that's the network linking box in there. Um, so that's talking to the wireless TRVs? Yes, yes it is. Yes, yes. It is. That's, that's the one the wireless okay. TRVs there. And then they, they use that uh, uh, and they're using the software right now to set up uh, uh, heating patterns. Heating patterns and diaries. And diaries in different areas. Those are heating diaries, aren't they? Yes, yes. yes. Um, the centre here is a very, very adaptable centre. Carries out has many, many different operations going on here with um, business meetings. They have a lot of clubs here doing a lot of different bits and pieces. Um, varying, varying times, parties, weddings. Um, so the whole operation of the place is very, very variable in which rooms are being used, when they're being used. Okay. Um, hence, you know, it's till late at night sometimes. Um, bar area might be in use late at night, whereas you might have all the other rooms not in use. So okay. this is where we need a system that we could actually control it, rather than just standard thermostatic red guards on it. Absolutely. Yeah, and and within the diary, what you can do is you can set not only say, well, I've got I've got the I know the Pilates class on yeah. uh, between this time and this time, but then you can say the temperature you want for the Pilates That's class. That's right. Yes. Um, yeah. you, do you use that sort of feature? We do. We are. I have set yeah. them uh, within reason, although yes. um, uh, most of our stuff we get to know what temperatures the classes are running at, and that's yes. it all the way through. Um, 
there are a couple of rooms where we've also got local control as well, adjustment at sort of plus or minus a couple of degrees, which is useful for the locals sure. if they need to do that. Sure. And how many rooms are there in Taipei? I think altogether we've got about probably 15, 20 on the system. Right. Something like that. Good. Excellent. Okay, so should we go and have a look at some more? Um, this is another room that you're uh, zoning using the wireless TRVs. Yes. So that's, uh, that's this one here? This is the wireless TRV here, uh, picking up off the main system on the Wi-Fi, and then that automatically controls the red valve. Um, when when you say Wi-Fi, that's actually the Zig, Zig network. Zig, Zig yes. network, yes. Yeah. So on the Zig network, that's talking to this valve, and then that's giving it the, the temperature that it wants at that particular point in time. That's right, and yes. And this operates. Yes. And, and are all the rest of the radiators, they've got covers like this, have they? Some have, some, some haven't. Have. Yes, we've got a mixture in the building, and um, we've got quite a few uh, temperature sensors, temperature humidity sensors within the building, on the walls within the rooms that are controlling those. Right, so separately we've got the, the tensor and heating save uh, temp room and temperature sensors. Yes. Uh, are they the temperature and he relative humidity? Or yes, they are. They are. Yes. Uh, those ones do occupancy as well, don't they? I think. I think uh, they do. Yes, on that they one. do. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, so you really you basically get three sensors uh, all in one. one. Yeah, that's so you, right, you yes. get occupancy, you get temperature, and you get relative humidity yes, yes. coming out of that. Oh, that's excellent. And so that information then goes back to the heating safe controller, the 3521 controller. Yes. Sorry, I'm talking yeah, about okay, that. No, no, that's but, um, but So it goes back to that, and then uh, the, the, the computer does all the clever stuff. Yes. And then it, and heating safe, and then it sends that information to this valve here. Yes. So this, it, it, it will tell this radiator basically what to do. That's right, yes. That's, that's excellent. Yeah. Okay, fine. Should we go and have a look some more? Yeah. Oh, right. So here we've got an example of, um, of one of the Zig um, radio valves. Yes. And uh, this is sticking out the top of the radiator, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. This is in um, where we haven't got a temperature control. We're using the actual temperature sensor within that valve to right. read the temperature yes. so that we can then control that valve. Right. Uh, some areas we're using zoning where we might have three radiators in a room and then we're linking back to one first and a sensor in that room. Right. This one, because it's in a corridor area, we're using the actual head to give us the temperature. Okay. Back. And also, do you use the function here to boost it? Do they ever push that? We try and discourage because the occupants of using yes. it because it's a public area. Right. Um, Basically, we do it all from the head. Yes, you can turn that off you in software. You can turn it off in software, software. yes, we can. So, so, yes. so the software can say, I know the boost button's there, but you can't use it. Yes, so that's, that's it, yes. Yeah. That's good. Okay, let's have a look some more. So, um, we need range extenders, as we've yes. said before, and this is an example of another range extender here. Yes. Okay, and uh, so this will extend the Zigbee network so that uh, it can reach all of the TRVs. Yes. And I also notice you've got a, a black, a black, you're something on the switch. We've just put little covers on those because this is like a public building. Yeah. Um, getting them switched off, all of a sudden I lose a system or section. Right? Yes. So that has avoided that happening. Mm. Um, got through the problems on it. And um, we now can lower the extenders because they will work within a circuit. Quite often, if one's lost, it will pick up the Another others one. as long as we've got enough in there. But it just helps to have the full circuit working and right. reach the extremities of it. Okay. So, and it's a simple plug-in device really, isn't it? Very so simple, very plug-in, just easy. Plug it in, push, push the button, button there it goes. There it goes, exactly. Good, okay, excellent. Thanks. Thank you. So, so in here we go, so this is the plant room, and uh, we've got a boiler right behind me. And uh, this is the 3520, which is the controller, heating safe controller. And uh, oh, yes, okay. push the button there, that's all working. Uh, and so that uh, wired is controlling that uh, um, zone valve yeah. over there, it's a Honeywell zone valve, isn't it? Pulling in the zone valve yes. plus also a circulating pump on that system. Right. So when we call for the hall, which has got a multiple of radiators in there, it brings that system So on. it opens that valve and also turns on the pump. pump. Yes. Excellent. So that's done directly from the 3520 controller. But that 3520 controller is also the heart of the Zig network as well. And that's what that little area on the side there is. Um, and so that is talking to the other range extenders to get to all the radiator valves so they're all part of that network. That's right, yeah. Fine. Um, the great thing in this one is actually, as you can see in here, it's a very, very basic boiler, very yes. basic 
system and it does work with even a basic system. Yes. So that's why we found it was the best system we could put in here, working with a separate, just a single pipe system as we've got in the building, yes. and we're still able to make it all work. So the point is you've got a single pipe system, which is the, probably the most inefficient yeah, heating system absolutely. you could possibly ever have, yeah. and, and we're controlling that well, and we've got a mixture in effect of, of a wired solution valves yeah. and pumps, but also wireless as well. So we've got a, a bit of both, yeah. depending on what we can get into different parts of the building. That's right, yeah. Oh, that's what it's worked well, doesn't it? That's very good. And as going back to it being a listed building, yes. to actually replace the heating system in the building is a huge job in this building. Absolutely. So this is a way of us producing some controls as a cost-effective solution mm. for, for the client. This is wired back. Um, to the uh, 3521, which is the controller, which has got all the, the, the high-level software. That's so right. when you use your PC to log in and you see all the graphs and, and the other graphics and your zip, zig network and all that sort of stuff, that's all done by that other unit. This one here is a hands-on sort of controller, which is uh, it's doing all the intelligence because it's working out what to do. Um, it, this is, is, does this actually control and turn on and off the boiler? This it does, yes. yes. It does so, the so, off the something else I left out there, yeah. of course, this is actually controlling the boiler behind me as well. It, so it's doing the whole thing. It works from waiting to see the first call on the room requiring yes. a temperature. At that point, the boiler is put on uh, to start the circuit, and also that zone is opened up. Right. So, it, and then it runs. Right will continue to run as more circuits come on and when the last circuit's closed obviously it shuts the boiler down as well. Mm, yeah. And all of that uh, takes place within the software you see of that particular controller that's right. where the the the, uh, uh, the other unit which is in the office that's got the, the, the pretty nice high level software which that's human it. beings understand yeah. where this is very much a sort of machine control type uh, uh, piece of equipment. But uh, yes, I didn't realise just now until you told me, of course, this is also controlling the boiler as well. So it's controlling the boiler, the, the pump, uh, and the main pump, presumably, as well. Yes, it does the yes. main pumps on the boiler, yep. which is... The other thing on here we do have is the ability in... Um, yeah, if there is ever a problem, we have an override switch on the side. Yes. Which enables us just to take an override on it. Absolutely, yes. Um, and get us out of any problems, which Good. is very useful yes. to have. And, and do you ever go online, uh, obviously not into this unit itself directly, but via the, uh, the, the high-level software, do you actually go online and look at the system? Yes, I do. And also, although I'm an engineer and I'm not on the site all the time, yes. if they have a problem, they'll call me. And I actually bring it up onto my uh, phone. Oh, I see. So you you got the you got the um, the iPhone, I've got the app, iPhone as well. app on there. Oh, excellent. Um, and I can just log into that. Um, right. And and do you always do it on your on your mobile phone, or do you? I, I tend to go to either that my iPad or I do some things to connect on using my um, PC at home. Right. So it enables me to look a bit further into it with the PC. Yeah. Um, but the I I find the phone a very quick indication Absolutely. of where I am with it, wherever I am, uh, so they can call, they've got a problem, mm. I can sort it out, look at it pretty quickly, or they need to change something. I've had weekends when they have something going on a weekend, there's no one on site, right. and I've been able to fix it from um, from home as it were. Excellent, yes. Well, that's very good, because for, from an engineering viewpoint and from uh, an M&E viewpoint, um, it's far better that you can solve the problem from afar instead of actually coming out because often what happens, I presumably before, you would have had to have driven out here, find out what the problem is Absolutely. Uh, and, and then drive back again where you can do the thing remotely. Absolutely, and if it is not a software problem, just a basic problem on for something in the building yes. or whatever, quite often I'm able to then talk through a caretaker on the site or something to sort Absolutely. the problem out yeah. um, without still having to visit site. Oh excellent, that's good. Um, they're going, there's a new part of uh, the building, so they're going to knock down what, some of the old They're not, but there's one old hall here, yes. um, which eventually will be, not certain when that's going to be, but eventually they're looking at refurbishing and rebuilding that. Um, and the existing main hall here at the moment is one we're just starting to have a little look at whether we put air conditioning in there right. um, and how we control that. So that's got a link with the heating system. And well, that's perfect because heating save, obviously, what it does is it controls the heating and also the aircon, yeah. and it also makes sure that the aircon's not on at the same time as you're trying to heat and yeah, vice absolutely. versa. So yeah. it's quite clever the way that works. Yeah. So that will be an absolutely excellent um, uh, way in which you could use heating save to better manage it. Yeah. And heating save also will do 
access control for you as well. Right. So are they likely to look at that? It is a possibility that that may be a, a way that they could go ahead with the place. I mean, they're constantly trying to evolve and improve it. Right. So I think the fact that do that um, monitoring system and the access control could both be very useful for them in the future. And, and what about uh, monitoring the use of electricity and, and the amount of electricity that's coming in? Because you've got three phase supply here. Yes, we have. So, um, it's pretty inexpensive. Uh, what are they? Hundred amp supplies. That's each. right. Yes. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's like super domestic, really. Yeah, it is. So uh, for just thirty pounds, you can put one of our uh, uh, meters, which generates sixteen hundred pulses per kilowatt hour. Right. And then you feed that straight into the spare inputs you've got on your existing system. So it'd be a very, very cheap upgrade. To Absolutely, give us all very the information, yeah. and we can have the information back to you. Well, it will also cost it all as well. So day by day, you not only get how much your electricity is costing you, yeah. but on each phase, at different times of the day, where that spend is, so they can sort of see if they're leaving lights on or. Yeah. Even the cooker on, or something like that. And obviously, the other thing we may consider is if we're putting a new building on, it's a possibility that that roof could be solar PV. Well, so then perfect. we would be looking if we can feed that back. Well, in the latest, that. latest version of Heating Save uh, does energy harvesting from solar PV. Right. And it's been designed also for battery technology, which is which is coming on more and yeah. more. Yeah. So that if you've got any excess solar PV, the last thing in the world you want to do, give it back to the power company because you only get three pence per kilowatt hour. It's theft really. <laughs> so um, the best thing to do is use it all yourself. Well obviously you try and use it as much as possible inside the building but then the next thing to do is I mean obviously heating hot water and any other areas where you could dump energy basically but then use battery technology to save that and then when it's dark or times like that when it's, the sun's not shining you can you can take that uh, electricity out of the batteries and use that against us that's something that worthwhile. Worthwhile the other thing that's very important like, honestly I say this to so many people get us in at the time the architect is thinking about designing the building yeah. because um, I know you'll find this hard to believe yeah. but architects uh, they're great at designing buildings but they're not always wonderfully good at building physics yes and so what they do is that they design this wonderful structure but they haven't really thought necessarily about the energy consumption and things like that and they use something called SAP or SBEMS which is the, the government's uh, statistics and and and, 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 and methods and mathematical models for how you should build a building yeah. um, but all of those are based on assumptions and there's something called the um, energy performance gap which basically the architect designed it one way and hey presto we go and use it and do you know what they look nothing like yeah. uh, and one of the reasons why is because when we designed the building we didn't really think about that so it's very important for the us to get involved. It is something that I'm sort of on board with the system yeah. and with the building, so I would always be very keen to push for as much um, control on the mechanical yeah. services. But the trick is when, they, when, they th when they're thinking about it and they're first talking to the architect, the trick is to get you along there at that stage. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yes. Yes. Yeah. Good, okay, fine. Well, super, thank you very much. Oh, so I'll show you my hand. We're off yeah, now. Yeah, so thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.